From 90.9 WBUR, this is a special edition of Radio Boston. I'm Tiziana Deering, and we start today with a 30-minute debate between the two Democratic candidates for state auditor. Chris Dempsey, former Assistant Secretary of Transportation under Governor Deval Patrick and a longtime transportation advocate, and Diana DiZaglio, Massachusetts State Senator representing the 1st Essex District, and before that, a three-term state representative for the 14th Essex District. Today's debate is the first of five primary debates hosted by WBUR, the Boston Globe, and WCVB Channel 5. The state auditor is the chief accountability officer for state government in Massachusetts, conducting audits, investigations, studies to promote accountability and transparency, improve performance, and make government work better. And that description is according to the office's state website. We have a lot to cover, but before we dive into opening statements, I'm just going to go over the rules very quickly so everyone knows what to expect. Candidates will have one minute to respond to each question. I will offer 30-second rebuttal opportunities. I may ask follow-up questions of both candidates at my discretion. I will be aggressive on managing the clock, so heads up on that. For listeners, if you're not watching the live video feed, we have a timer right here on the table. Candidates, you will see the green light when your time starts, a yellow light when you have 15 seconds left, and a red light when it is time to be done. Each candidate will also have one minute for an opening statement and one minute for a closing statement. We drew names for who goes first in opening and closing statements. As a result, State Senator Diana DiZaglio will go first in the opening statements, and former Assistant Secretary of Transportation Chris Dempsey will go first in the closing statements. And one more thing, for listeners, there are several ways you can follow along today, aside from listening right now on WBUR. We're also broadcasting a live video feed of today's event, you can go to WBUR.org, BostonGlobe.com, or WCVB.com to watch. And so now we will dive in. We'll begin with one-minute opening statements from both candidates. First, State Senator Diana DiZaglio. Hey, everybody. Great to be here. My name is Diana DiZaglio, and I'm a current state senator running to be your next state auditor to ensure that working families like ours get access to and accountability from our state leaders and our state agencies, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, or our zip code. I was born to a 17-year-old single mom, grew up housing insecure, cleaned houses and waitressed my way through community college, and then earned scholarships to Wellesley College to become the first in my family to graduate. I know what it's like to struggle and to have to be scrappy, and without the investments made through state government, and the investments of others, I would not have had the opportunities I did. So I know how important it is that our investments made through your tax dollars are spent wisely because every wasted dollar puts another child's future opportunities at risk and there are enough barriers to access. State government shouldn't be one of them. But right now, state government continues to be ranked by good government groups as the least transparent and accessible in the nation. I'm running to help change that and to open state government up back to the people it serves. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And we'll turn now to one-minute opening statement from former Assistant Secretary of Transportation, Chris Dempsey. Tiziana, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you to your viewers and your listeners who are tuning in. And thank you to Senator DiZaglio for joining us as well. I'm Chris Dempsey, and I'm running to be your next state auditor. I'm the son of public school teachers, and I saw my parents digging into their own pockets to pay for school supplies for their students, as we know public school teachers across the Commonwealth do to this day. My parents taught me the importance of public service and that facts matter. And that led me to a career working for Governor Patrick as Assistant Secretary of Transportation. I'm the only candidate in this race with experience making our state bureaucracy work better for all of us. But I've also stood up to protect the public interest as the co-founder of the grassroots No Boston Olympics, where we went up against corporate industries and titans who are pushing a wasteful Olympic bid that would have cost all of us $15 billion. I'm proud to be supported and endorsed in this race by the Mass Democratic Party and by incumbent state auditor Suzanne Bump, the first woman to ever hold the office and the person who knows the job the best. Okay, here on Radio Boston, we have a debate among the Democratic primary candidates for state auditor here in the Commonwealth. We're going to jump into questions now, and I want to remind listeners, according to the state website, mass.gov, the state auditor, quote, is the chief accountability officer for state government in Massachusetts and its residents. The office conducts audits, investigations, and studies to promote accountability and transparency, improve performance, and make government work better, unquote. I bring that up because I want to start with the job itself. So, In the description I just mentioned, I want to highlight the idea of promoting accountability and transparency. State Senator Diana DiZaglio, what do accountability and transparency look like to you? And if elected, what are one or two specific places you would start looking? 
As a member of the state Senate, I have fought hard for transparency and accountability in our state legislature, making the process something that's open and transparent to all. Right now, our committee votes are not made public. We're not subject to the public records laws. Taxpayer-funded NDAs continue to silence government workers about abuse uh, potentially happening in our state government. I find that to be unacceptable, and I have led the charge on issues such as banning taxpayer-funded non-disclosure agreements, something that my opponent voted to uphold in the town of Brookline as a Brookline town meeting member. We know that there have been cases of, uh, you know, or accusations of racial discrimination, and that's been a big challenge in the town of Brookline. And the time that my opponent had to be able to vote for transparency and accountability and ban the abuse of taxpayer-funded NDAs, he chose to support the opportunity for Brookline to silence people about discrimination and harassment using your tax dollars to fund taxpayer-funded NDAs. I find that unacceptable. So, Chris Dempsey, 30 seconds for response there. Transparency and accountability are absolutely essential to making our state government work better and hold it accountable to taxpayers. I'm the only person in this race that has actually worked inside of state government to do that. I co-founded the MassDOT Open Data Program, which led to the creation of all the smartphone applications that make train and uh, bus information available in real time. And we made the MBTA the very first transit agency on the East Coast to make that possible. But I've also worked outside of state government and I've worked in, uh, to stand up to protect the public interest as the co-founder of No Boston Olympics, where we took facts and data, put them in front of all of us, and were effective at changing the conversation. Okay, there. I'm going to give you an additional 30 seconds, please, to answer the portion of my question that I asked State Senator DiZaglio, which is about one or two specific places you would start looking if elected. Sure. So I'm proud that I'm the first candidate in this race to put out a policy paper of any kind about what I'm going to do in the office. One was on carbon accounting to make the office the first in the country to do that so we can hold agencies accountable to the carbon emissions goals that we have. I also put out a 15-point plan for reform of the Massachusetts State Police. We need more oversight of that agency, and the state auditor is one of the few elected officials on Beacon Hill that can do that. Any response there for 30-second State Senator DiZaglio? I agree. We absolutely need accountability uh, across the board. Uh, And that's why I think it's important that the next state auditor not support non-transparent processes like using taxpayer funds to fund non-disclosure agreements that have abused, that have been used to silence workers across our state using tax dollars on issues of discrimination and harassment. My opponent voted to support that. Okay, moving along in questions about the role. Chris Dempsey, how do you see the difference between the auditor and the attorney general in ensuring accountability and transparency? And I'm going to give you an example here. You said in a February interview that you'd expand the reach of the auditor's office to include oversight and reforms of the Massachusetts State Police, which at the time you said is, quote, an institution that should be accountable to Beacon Hill, but too often is left to run itself, end quote. Isn't public corruption, for example, really more the purview of the attorney general? No, it's both. We need a team effort on Beacon Hill. Uh, My proposal on the state police does not expand the auditor's powers at all. It's well within the the auditor's powers to do that. The auditor is not a law enforcement body, though. So we do not have the ability to take people to court in the way that the attorney general does. It has to be a partnership. And I'm really proud that we have support of many leaders on Beacon Hill, including 24 women legislators, by far the most in this race, including five women in the Senate. Uh, This job, you have to be fiercely independent. You have to follow the facts and data because facts matter, but you also have to be collaborative to get anything done because the power is indirect. You can't change policy yourself. You have to do it indirectly through persuasion and advocacy, and I've done that inside of government and outside of government. So a quick 30-second follow to you. I'd like a specific example of both independent and collaborative outside of state government. Well, I would say my work leading No Boston Olympics. So in that effort, we got outspent by the corporate titans that were pushing that bid 1,500 to one. And that led to some challenging conversations, including having former colleagues and friends of mine who were on the other side of that bid. But we led with the facts and the data. And the takeaway from that effort is that even when you're outspent and outgunned, if you put good information in front of the people of Massachusetts, we make smart decisions. And that is the role of the state auditor, to dig into the executive branch, to figure out what's working and what's not working and how things need to change and put that information in front of us. So State Senator Diana DiZaglio, 30-second follow to you uh, or rebut. I had asked Chris Dempsey about the difference between the attorney general and the auditor on accountability and transparency. Certainly. The auditor helps to shine a light on where we need more accountability, and the AG is the enforcement branch. For example, the state auditor, uh, which we've voted to fund at about $2 million in the Bureau of Special Investigations Unit, looks at issues within EEC, 
DTA, and Mass Health. And when they uncover potential fraud or abuse in the system, those cases are then referred over to the Attorney General's office for any sort of prosecution that might need to occur. So the auditor shines the light, and then the AG enforces. So I'm going to stay with you for the next full question, State Senator Diana DiZaglio. You speak frequently, as you did at your in your opening statements today, about your background, born to a teen mother, housing insecure, and you frame your candidacy often as one that's about access for the powerless and for the low income. You have a social justice equity audit plan. With a social justice agenda explicitly in mind, why auditor? What levers does the auditor explicitly control that would make it the best way for you to pursue that agenda? Every penny saved is another penny that goes into initiatives such as fighting for environmental justice, fighting against climate change, making sure that we're fighting for housing opportunities for all, fighting for health care for all, fighting for access to educational opportunities for all. And like I said at the beginning, you know, born to a 17-year-old single mom growing up housing insecure and benefiting from state government's investments into my education made all the difference for me. It changed my life. Right now, what's happening is that in the state legislature, votes are taken in the middle of the night, like we just saw the other night, and things are done under sort of, you know, we're not sort of, they're done under a cloak of darkness up on Beacon Hill right now. That affords the opportunity for government waste and for tax dollars to be potentially misappropriated. I want to go into the auditor's light and shine an office into where we can produce cost savings so that all those dollars saved can be dollars that we invest back into our communities to help our working families. 30 second follow to you. The auditor's job as it's currently structured is to audit more than 200 government entities at least every three years. Is that, is there enough time? Is there enough resources to work on social justice issues beyond that business of the office? Well, the two don't need to be separate. We can walk and chew gum at the same time, certainly. And I would also make sure to advocate for robust funding for the state auditor's office. As a senator and formerly as a state representative, I have experience, extensive experience, of advocating for funding through the legislative process and being successful in that, delivering millions of dollars through the years for our local communities in various fronts. That's the work that I'm going to take with me to the state auditor's office, advocating for the robust funding that we need to be able to do the job efficiently and effectively. This is a special Radio Boston debate with the Democratic candidates for state auditor co-sponsored by WCVB-TV in the Boston Globe. 30-second rebuttal to you, Chris Dempsey, and then I'll move on. Tiziana, we've heard the senator talk about working for more transparency on Beacon Hill and following a socially progressive agenda. But if you look at her record, there's a big difference between the rhetoric and where she's actually been. Here are the last five ratings from progressive Massachusetts for her five terms in legislature. F, C+, plus, C+, D plus and C. That organization has endorsed me along with every other social justice organization in this race, Progressive Democrats of Massachusetts, Our Revolution. The people who are on the front lines of making this state more progressive are with me in this race. So let's stay with the question of endorsements here, and this is going to be a 30-second answer for each of you. Current auditor Suzanne Bump is retiring after more than a decade. She endorsed Chris Dempsey in the race. 30-second answer. Diana DiZaglio, what's one thing you think Suzanne Bump has done well and that you would try to continue or carry forward if you were elected? I think that Suzanne Suzanne Bump has done a great job as our state auditor, and uh, I think it's clear in the race uh, along with that that I am not the establishment candidate in this race. I respect the auditor's work that she has done on issues such as EEC, pilot reform, and beyond. I do think that we need to audit the legislature, and that is something that I've been calling for that hasn't been done. And I think we need to audit the abuse of taxpayer-funded NDAs, which also hasn't been done per my requests. Uh, And we found out Maybe it's due to the fact that the auditor's office has some NDAs. And to you, Chris Dempsey, one thing you think Suzanne Bump could have handled better and something that you would approach differently. 30 seconds. I'm glad to hear Senator DeZoglio say that Auditor Bump has done a great job, and I'm really proud to have her support in this race, the first woman to ever hold the office. Even she said when she announced her retirement that she believes that the next generation can do more with the powers of the office to make it a real force for good within government, to use that bully pulpit Everywhere I've gone, whether it's transportation for Massachusetts or no Boston Olympics, I've taken the platform that's there, expanded it, 
and made change in state government. That's what I want to do as your next state auditor. So turning back to you, State Senator Diana DiZaglio, you talked about auditing the legislature a minute ago. I'm going to go in a little bit different director here. The candidate who wins this primary will almost certainly face Anthony Amore, who is running unopposed in the Republican primary for state audit. You don't uh, likely meet in the general election. Amore has said that one of his priorities would be to audit the auditor's office. His campaign website includes the following, quote, over the past 12 years, the number of annual audits performed by the auditor's office has steadily declined. As a result, Massachusetts residents have seen government failures that could have been prevented, end quote. Aside from the MBTA or the state police, is he correct that there is a government failure that could have been avoided had there been a timely audit? Yes. Uh, I am going to, as one of the first things I do entering into the state auditor's office, is uh, request a peer review by the National State Auditors Association of my office. That is how our auditor's offices get audited to make sure that there is an independent review. And that will be one of the first things that I do. We need to make sure that the office that is in charge of accountability in the state and bringing more transparency and making sure uh, that there's oversight regarding the abuse of taxpayer funds is not itself abusing taxpayer funds. And like I said, uh, just to go back to those NDAs, uh, we found out that there have been at least three non-disclosure agreements executed in the state auditor's office, actually. We knew that there were 33 used in the House. We know that there have been hundreds used in other agencies. And now we know that there have been three used in the state auditor's office. So we need to start with a review of that first and foremost to make sure that we can lead the charge on transparency and accountability and set the example for others about what that looks like. 30 seconds for a response, Chris Dempsey. Well, I certainly agree that the organization should have a top-to-bottom review. I would do that with any organization that I would take control of and, and oversee. Absolutely. But the senator mentioned the State Auditors Association. Auditor Bump is the past president of that organization, and she's received recognition and awards for the success of her office. She has been a national leader on auditing. She was not expecting to weigh in on this race when it started, but she said she has compared the statements of the candidates and she is strongly with me in this race. She is the person who knows the job the best, the first woman to ever hold the office, and I'm honored to have her support. Okay, staying with you, former Assistant Secretary of Transportation Chris Dempsey, Governor Baker surprised a lot of people during a signing ceremony for the budget last week when he brought up a 1986 law, which has only been triggered once, 1987, that basically says if the government collects uh, revenues at a pace that outstrips wages and earnings, they have to give some money back. As I'm sure you know, there's been a great deal of surprise. Uh, House Speaker Ron Mariano complained this week that the governor caught them by surprise. But the state auditor is responsible for calculating whether that happens and admitting, administering a report. Coming back to your potential opponent, Anthony Amore, depending on who wins this primary, we know that Ron Mariano considered a change to the 1986 law, and Amore has said in a statement that he's already preparing to legally challenge any potential changes. Quote, the people want and need tax refund checks now. My campaign is already lining up the 24 taxpayers needed to go to court to enforce this position, position provision of state law should it be regrettably necessary. End quote. Requires 24 taxpayers to do this. Is that the right approach, and are you planning that? I'm not that concerned with what Anthony Amore is saying. At this point, we're focused on winning the Democratic primary on September 6th. The state auditor's role in this issue is very clear. It's in the statute. It's Chapter 62F, Section 5. What the state auditor does is it collects data from the treasurer, from the comptroller, from the um, secretary of ANF and others, puts that data together, and runs a calculation. This is a, a job where numbers matter, where uh, training and finance and accounting matters. And I'm the only candidate in this race with that experience and with that educational background. You have to follow the facts and the data. This is not a political uh, function in terms of assessing this tax package. It's about uh, doing the numbers and following them wherever they go. And I'm sure that Auditor Bump will do what's right when it comes to this question. All right. So I'll give you a 30-second response here on my follow. Let me reframe. Forget Anthony Amore. Should the auditor enforce and make sure that the legislature does give back the money triggered by the 1986 law? If, if the auditor has the power to do that, um, then sure. But I don't think that that's a power that the auditor's office has. The, the auditor is simply charged with doing the calculation and issuing the report. Um, that issue would ultimately, I think, go to the SJC. Um, so that's and that's why Anthony Amore is is following filing that lawsuit. 
It's not the auditor's job to play politics here. It's the auditor's job to do the calculation. Anthony seems distracted by the politics in this case. Okay, so before we move on to another subject, one more quick question, 30-second answer for each of you on the job itself. What's one thing, State Senator Diana DiZaglio, in your personal experience that you believe makes you a better choice than your opponent? I have the proven track record of standing up and speaking truth to power regardless of party affiliation up on Beacon Hill. And I have a 10-year record of fighting for that transparency and accountability, fighting for opportunities to read legislation in a timely fashion, to require at least 72 hours to read and review legislation, fighting to make sure that we are subject to the public records law, fighting to open up state government to all in our communities. And I've been standing by the working families in our communities for the last 10 years. I'm the only candidate in this race with that type of legislative proven track record working alongside of folks. And if I might ask if it's okay for me to answer the 62F question as I'll, well. I'll let you come back Thank to you. that. So here, uh, Chris Dempsey, same question. One thing in your personal experience. I'm the only candidate in this race that has actually made change rather than just calling for change. As Assistant Secretary of Transportation, I made the MBTA the very first transit agency on the East Coast to open its data, to make its data more transparent so that it could benefit all of us that are waiting for buses and trains. I will be the first statewide elected official to commute to Beacon Hill by transit since Mike Dukakis left office in 1991. That's not a campaign gimmick. That's how I get around. We need more transit riders to fix the situation at the MBTA. Okay, we're going to put a pin in transit. We're going to come back to it in just a second. 30 seconds, Diana DiZaglio, and explain 62 as well. 30 seconds. <laughs> so uh, first and foremost, as a state senator, I have passed bills into law. I would consider that making change for our communities. And for as much as my opponent... Uh, loves to tout his experience as Assistant Secretary of Transportation and Mass DOT. I think it's very clear that our public transportation system has never properly served the people of Massachusetts. That's an agency that, as a state senator, I demanded legislative oversight hearings for regarding the MBTA, which is literally catching on fire right now. We need changes. We need bold changes. I'm the only candidate in this race who's called for a safety audit of the MBTA. All right. Well, so let's go into the MBTA now here. And I'm going to begin with a quick question to the two of you. There's a lot we can dive into, but I am mindful reports this morning suggesting that at a 12 15 or 12 30 press conference today the mbta and governor baker are going to announce potentially a full shutdown of the orange line for 30 days and comments that steve poftak the general manager made in a board meeting this morning suggest something similar potentially for the green line as well as the auditor responsible for um, uh, transparency accountability but also improving performance one sentence actually answer Chris Dempsey is shutting a whole bunch down all at once the best way to improve performance. Absolutely not. This is Governor Baker waving the white flag after eight years. And Diana DiZaglio, one sentence. No, and we need a safety audit of the MBTA, and I'm the only candidate in this race to commit to doing one. Okay, so let's stay with that, Senator DiZaglio. You have talked about wanting to audit the T. We know that come summer 2023, the T could be looking at a $236 million gap in its operating budget. Of course, there have been multiple safety issues, dragging death uh, on a red line train in April, a death after a woman's car was struck by a commuter rail train in Wilmington in January. But the Federal Transit Administration is already doing a safety check. We're expecting a report for them. Given what we mentioned earlier about all the audits that the auditor's office is behind on, why is this the best resource and focus use at this time? One minute. It's great that the feds have come in with their report, but we need a state-level report to get to the bottom of how we can, in state government, make our transportation system work more efficiently and effectively. When we talk about the money that it costs to actually fund our transportation adequately to address these public safety issues, I am proud of the work that I've done, leading the charge in my district, being the first to sign the initiative to uh, support the fair share amendment on the upcoming ballot, which is a progressive way to fund our transportation system. I voted for that four times. My opponent has uh, <laughs> supported the regressive gas tax through the years, leading the charge on raising the gas tax by 25 cents per gallon, advocating for a 25 cent per gallon increase on working families, low income families across our communities to try to fund these needs. I think that we need to fund our public transportation system to address these safety issues, but we need to do so in a progressive manner that does not harm disproportionately our underserved populations here in Massachusetts. Former Assistant Secretary of Transportation Chris Dempsey, 30 seconds for response. This is an issue that's so personal to me. Uh, when my wife Anna gave me a kiss on the cheek before she left for work, she then walked out of the our house, and she got on the green line. She takes it every day, just as I will when I'm the next state auditor. And 
the the senator's statement about conducting a safety audit is empty calories and a press release. It doesn't have any facts or data about what that office can do. It does not have the resources to inspect concrete or to assess what the operations control control center at the MBTA is doing or not doing. The better approach, the more prudent one here is the one I've suggested, which is to take the FTA's recommendations and then see whether the MBTA is following those recommendations or not. That is the work of the auditor's office to see where the gaps are between what's on the books and what's actually happening. That's our skill set, not time, wearing time, a hard hat and time. inspecting So content. I'm going to give you a 30-second follow, which is with a, a, a state agency that size, with this many safety issues, why not make the auditor's office, who's responsible for transparency and investigations, look at safety? No, it absolutely, absolutely will look at safety. But you can't just say, I'm calling for a safety audit as a press release without any detail about how you would actually do that. I've been in the tunnels of the MBTA system. I've been to the operations control center. The people who work in the auditor's office do not have the expertise to do that. If the senator had said she's calling for that and she's calling for $15 million more in auditor's budget and she's going to hire XYZ skill sets, then we're talking about something. But the press release just said, I'm calling for a safety audit. We are not going to fix this problem by putting out press releases. We're going to fix it by rolling up our sleeves, and I'm the only person that has actually done that okay. in the executive branch. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for, to rebut State Senator Diana DeZoglio, and then I'm going to give you about 10 seconds after because I missed a clock there, and I'm trying to be fair. Go ahead. No worries. So uh, my press release said that I plan on conducting a safety audit, plan on conducting a safety audit, and that was something that uh, our Republican challenger also committed to doing, and it's something that the Carmen's Association, that the MBTA Inspectors Union, and that the machinists and the workers of the MBTA stand with us on. And when I did issue that press release, my opponent launched an attack against our campaign saying that a safety audit was not needed of the MBTA, which I find absolutely astounding for any auditor candidate to say. So we, we have, have the support we, of the workers, let me and my up. opponent has the let support of former up. management. We have, we, we have to move to closing statements momentarily, but 30 seconds follow to you. So you audit the safety of the T. What does then? What power does the auditor's have office have after that to do anything? Well, she can use the bully pulpit of that office to advocate for change, working in coordination with the legislature, which I have experience doing as a member fighting for changes. We need to know what the problem is before we can vote to fix it. And I'd love to talk about that 62F issue. The state audit. I gave you okay. 30 seconds on 62F and you went somewhere <laughs> else. Fair so enough, fair enough. But before we go to closing statements, we are going to have a little bit of fun here. We enjoy lightning rounds and we're trying to help people get to know the two sure. of you as candidates. So kind of try to keep to one word answers here. First, Chris Dempsey, who is on the Boston sports Mount Rushmore? Uh, we have to start with Bill Russell, who we lost this past week and who was a legend, not just on the court, but off the court. Uh, I'd put the goat up there as well. The uh, goat being? The goat being Tom Brady. Um, I'd put uh, Bobby Orr up there. And from the Sox, let's go with Big Poppy. All right. And you, Diana DiZaglio? I would say, look, back in the day, I was <laughs> able to go to a lot more baseball games than I am right now. And I absolutely adored Pedro Martinez. Got to meet him one time uh, walking down the street in Boston. He was incredibly kind. Um, and got to meet his family, and uh, I would say he's right up there, the too, other with Tom Brady. Same same with the rest, Bill Russell, Tom Brady, I, Bobby Orr? I would say I would say Tom Brady, and the third one I'm going to have to think about. All right, and uh, iced or hot coffee? Iced. And you, Chris? I'm a tea guy. Oh, iced or hot tea? Uh, hot tea, And speaking sure. of tea, do you talk to strangers on the tea? Uh, I do, yeah. I think it's important that we build some community on the tee. That's how we're going to start making it better. And Diana DiZaglio, Strangers on the Tee? Absolutely. I love chatting with people. It's uh, why I actually ended up pursuing a career in public service was uh, getting to engage more with folks in our community. All right. It's time now for the candidates' closing statements to remind listeners we drew names before uh, the debate. And former Assistant Secretary of Transportation Chris Dempsey, we will start with you. You have one minute for a closing statement. Tiziana, thanks so much again for having me today. I'm Chris Dempsey, and I'm running to be your next state auditor. I'm proud to be endorsed and supported by the Mass Democratic Party, by incumbent state auditor Suzanne Bump, by Progressive Massachusetts, and organization after organization that is rallying behind this grassroots campaign. I live in the first floor of a triple-decker with my amazing wife, Anna, about two blocks from where I grew up and where my public school teacher parents still live. And Anna and I are looking forward to starting a family together. We want that to be in a Massachusetts that is the best that it can be. And that means making Massachusetts state government the best that it can be by making it more transparent, more accountable, more efficient, and more fair. I'm the only candidate in this race with experience reforming state government from the inside. And I've also stood up outside of state government to protect taxpayers as the co-founder of No Boston Olympics, saving us 15 
$1.5 billion. I'd be honored to have the support of your listeners and viewers in the September 6th Democratic primary. Thank you. All right. Turning to State Senator Diana DiZaglio for closing statement. Thank you so much. Throughout my career, I have taken on the Beacon Hill establishment specific to matters of transparency, accountability, and equity. And that's the kind of state auditor we need. And that I will be working to open up state government to everyone and shift the balance of power back to the people. I've been endorsed in this race by the Massachusetts Teachers Association, the Massachusetts Nurses Association, the AFL-CIO, Emily's List, Congresswoman Laurie Trahan, and many more because of my proven track record of speaking truth to power up on Beacon Hill. We need bold, meaningful change to bring the auditor's office to the next level because working families can't afford to wait for access to health care, a great education, a roof over their heads, and a public transportation system that works for all families. Once again, I'm Senator Diana DiZaglio. I'm running for state auditor, and I hope to earn your vote. All right, and that will do it for this half-hour debate between the two Democratic candidates for state auditor. Stay with WBUR, the Boston Globe, and WCVB for coverage of all the major races in this midterm cycle. I want to thank our guests today, the two Democratic candidates for state auditor, Chris Dempsey and Diana DiZaglio, and a special thanks to our partners at the Boston Globe and WCVB Channel 5. You can listen back to this full debate on all those websites, WBUR.org, RadioBoston.org, BostonGlobe.com, and WCVB.com. And don't forget to vote in the state primaries on September 6th. And don't go anywhere. When we come back, Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey joins us. I'm Tiziana Deering. You're listening to Radio Boston.